went to unmute. Now, Jerry runs a beautiful session in the UK called Bards Allowed. So let's hear your English accent there now, Jerry. Come on. No, I'm I'm asking you to unmute. There you are. <laughs> Come on, Jerry. Say something so we can hear where you're from. Yes, indeed. You'd never guess, would you? I'm from Woodbridge in Suffolk in the UK. <laughs> you would not guess it. <laughs> So. <laughs> have you enjoyed tonight jerry absolutely brilliant yeah what do you think of this idea of hands across the sea and having sessions you know kind of between ireland and england where we actually go to one another i, I think this should be encouraged there's no doubt about that we need we need something like that don't we there's we a lot definitely of them, you know and, and uh, we need to be there there used to be a coin once like that wasn't it with a coin That's that it. hands across the, yeah yes we need more of that we definitely do, you know, and I think if this time has shown us anything, it's that we we are starving for connection yeah. to one another, you know. Yeah. So, Jerry, yeah. I'm going to let you off to entertain us for a few minutes. <laughs> right, thank you very much. I'm, I'm delighted to be here, and thanks for inviting me. And um, as you know, by my I'm from County Roscommon. A lot of people know as this, but uh, the story I tell you tonight it's a story I wrote about twelve years ago. I, I just started storytelling. I'd uh, made that, that little step from poetry into stories. But in the hard winter, we couldn't do poetry outdoors. So we went indoors and we started storytelling. So I was invited to Norwich, a wonderful friend of mine, Dave Tong, the Archmate of Norwich. A lot of you will have met him, I'm sure. And uh, he was doing a team of uh, mythical creatures. And I had no idea what he was talking about. I knew I didn't have any stories of mythical creatures or rose wood. So, um, this is a story I wrote. So a little north and northwest of me is the county of Sligo. And, and that's where many of the great people come from, the artists and the poets and the writers and the musicians and the singers. So as I say to them, if you're born in Sligo, you're born for good chance you're born for fame and fortune. Whereas if you're born next door in Roscommon, there's a great chance you're going to be born for export. So I've ended up in England, you know, 50 years ago, this year, as a matter of fact. And on the left, on the west side of County Sligo, this wonderful mountain, Knock Marie, also known as Maeve's Mountain, Maeve on, of Antonbo Cooley, the Catherine of Cooley, wonderful story for another time, as they say. And three quarter ways up Knock Marie, two men were walking. One was about three, maybe four meters ahead of the other one. And this is long before the time of social distancing. And you might say that there's nothing unusual in that. Well, for one thing, this was after 11 o'clock at night. The two people hated each other, hated each other with a vengeance. One was, was from County Longford, the other was from County Roscommon. Always fighting who owned the most cattle, who owned the most money, this time the other. It said that they had killed each other at least three times. It's here they were, on the same mountain. And as they walked up, the man in front, Connor, he stopped and he says, right, Luke, have you got any more of that putty in there? And Luke says, I have. Well, give me some, says Connor. And Luke handed him the bottle of putty. And Luke took a big sip of this putty. And he says, right, tell me, what are we doing here after 11 o'clock at night? We've been on the go since six o'clock this morning. We've walked all the way from County Longford. Place called Lanesford, as a matter of fact. Well, says Connor, I've told you this every time we stopped. It's to prove his prophecy. Well, says Luke, you better tell me again. Or all those wonderful people zooming in with Maria Gillen about 2,000 years time will have no idea what we're on about. Here. Well, the poop is prophecy. Pooka's prophecy, prophecy that says, they that dream the same dream for seven nights in a row, leading up to the full moon of lunacy, should follow that dream, or there may lay their destiny. But your enemy you must ask to aid with your task. And that is why I came to you this morning at six o'clock to come with me on this journey. But tell me again, what was the dream? Well, says Lou, I was dreaming I was up Knock Marie, exactly where we are now. I've never been here before in my life. 
And as I walked up this mountain, I saw to the left a big wild path. It was winding its way to the cairn of maize. And on the right hand side was a small path, a dark path. I took that path. I could hardly see in front of my, my hands in front of my face. The moon would not penetrate the canopy of those trees. There were 16 on the left, 16 on the right, and there was one smack bang in the middle at the end that had knocked my face off. But when I came out of there, I saw the full moon was shining on this huge rock. It was about three hurling pitches long, or maybe two hurling pitches high. And I made my way to it. And as I made my way to it, the moon was beautiful. I then wanted to relieve myself. So I lay my hand against the rock. And as soon as I did, the rock toppled over. I looked down at my feet, and there was this creature. It was an ugly creature, a creature like nothing I'd ever seen before in my life. It had scales on its head. It had, had the, like the ears of a cow and the nose of a dog and the eyes of a deer. And I bent down and I grabbed it by those two big ears and I dragged it nine steps back and I walked back to where it come from. And there I saw, glistening in the full moon of lunacy, a spade, just the handle of a spade. And I was compelled to bend down and pick it up. And I picked it up in my both hands and I dug it into the ground, but it did not go far. There was two on one. I scraped around along with this head of a spade and this wooden cask appeared. And there was this crack. And I put the blade of the spade into this crack and I gently prized and prized and prized until it became open, more open and more open. And there inside was the finest jewelry you could ever see. It was shimmering in the moonlight. There was rubies, there was sapphires, there was gold. Now, says Connor, give me back that bottle that put you. And Connor gave back the Luke gave back the bottle of put in, and Connor took a drink from it. But what happened after that? Well, I woke up, I'd wet the bed, and then I came for you. As the prophecy says, your enemy, you were tasked to aid with your task. And here we are. Well, says Connor, we better get on with it. And they walked further up. Not long, they saw this big opening, leading, winding up to the cairn of May. And on the right hand side was a dark path. And they took that dark path. They could hardly see the way through. Again, the moon was not penetrating the canopy. 16 trees on the left, 16 trees on the right, and one smack bang in the middle. And again, Luke banged his face on. And when they turned left, they saw the big rock, about three hurling pitches long, about two hurling pitches high. And they walked over to it. And Connor says, now look, do exactly what you did. And Luke went over and he put his hand against the rock, but nothing happened. He put his hand further up from the rock, but nothing happened. He put his two hands on and nothing happened. He started to kick it, but nothing happened. And Connor says, you're making a fool of me. You have brought me up here. If my people hear the fool you've made of me, they will have no respect for me again. Now give us that bottle, he says. And he grabbed the bottle and he walked around the side of the rock. He now wanted to relieve himself. And with the bottle in one hand, he undone his trousers with his other hand. And as he began to urinate, he put his hand onto the rock and the rock toppled over. He thought he heard the crunching of bones or a scream, but he wasn't bothered. He dropped that bottle because there at his feet was this ugly creature, exactly what Connor had told him. It had a big head. It was flat, so flat, could probably post it beneath your door. Big ears like a cow, eyes of a deer, the nose of a dog. And he grabbed the big ears. And he pulled it back, nine steps backwards. And he went back and there, shimmering in the moonlight, was the head of a spade. And he grabbed that spade with his two hands and he lifted it up and he pushed it into the earth, but it didn't go far. 
Again, there was throat and wood, exactly like Connor had said. And he sat scraping with the head of the spade until this wooden casket showed. And there he saw the little joint and he put the blade with the spade in and he creaked it open. And there he saw shimmering in the full moon of lunacy, jewels like of all the scriptures, things he had never seen before. He was oblivious to what was happening behind him. The first thing he had got something was wrong when he got big burning on his ass. Then he realized he's been lifted into the air. He looked over his shoulder and there was this creature with fire spewing from his mouth. So powerful that was lifting him up and bringing him closer to the edge of nothing real. And when the fire and the flames of that creature mingled and merged with the putching he consumed all day long, Connor exploded into smithereens. And to this very day, not one smidgen of a smidgerine has ever been found. Thank you very much. Not one smidgen of a smithereen has been found. Oh, 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 Jerry, I tell you, thank God you weren't telling that in the goose town crack as we went down the dark and windy roads of Antrim. <laughs> Lovely story, Jerry. Thank you so much. You. And we look forward to seeing you in Cork and Kerry very soon. Yes, when you indeed. come to stay with me in Cork, I'll have to bring you to Listowel because it's it's a, a beautiful place full of legend. You will love it. Yes, when I'm there next year. With the help of God, yes, absolutely. Yes, you know. Yes. So Jerry, thank you so much for coming. And if people want to go to Jerry's session, if you go on to Facebook and like Bards Allowed, you'll get all the information that you need. Isn't that right, Jerry? That's right. That's Very right. good. Thank you, my darling. Thanks for coming. Thank you. So